Welcome to the interview room. Did you know Charleston, South Carolina is known for a lot of things? It's food, it's art, it's southern charm, hospitality. But I'll bet you there's one thing you didn't know. The first female serial killer in the United States was locked up right here in this building. I'm Chris McDonough, a retired homicide detective. I've interviewed thousands of people, from serial killers to ministers. Welcome to the interview room. So the story of the first female serial killer by the name of Lavinia Fisher starts right here in South Carolina in Charleston and in this building. Okay. So how does this all come about? Well, both she and her husband open up a hotel. Okay. And in this hotel, people started disappearing. Okay. And so a lot of the people in the community started to ask questions. The story of Lavinia Fisher began in 1783 when she was born in Charleston, South Carolina. Not much is known about her, but she was married to John Fisher, and in the early 1800s, the couple ran what was called the Six Mile Wayfarer Inn, a hotel located six miles north of Charleston. At the time, wagon trade in and out of town was a profitable business. But many of the traders who stayed overnight at local inns ended up getting robbed by highwaymen. When traders arrived at the Six Mile Wayfarer Hotel, they were met by Lavinia and John. Lavinia was said to be charming and known for her beauty. She would talk with the men to determine if they were carrying cash. As the story goes, Lavinia would entice them with cups of tea laced with oleander to get them lethargic. When the men would fall asleep in their bed, a trap door was said to open, and the bed would drop into a pit below. Her husband John, according to legend, would kill them and take their belongings. The men were never heard from again. The Fishers were part of a large gang of highway robbers that operate out of two hotels in the backcountry, the Five Mile House and their Six Mile Wayfarer House, which became a hideout for outlaws. As the story goes, a mob, who were fed up with the robberies and wanted to put the highway robbery gang out of business, took matters into their own hands. First, they went to the Five Mile House, told everyone to leave, then burnt it to the ground. Then they went to the Fisher's Six Mile Wayfarer Inn. They kicked everyone out and left a man behind to guard it. The next day, outlaw gangsters, including Lavinia, came back and assaulted the guard. The man looked to Lavinia for help, but instead, she choked him out and shoved his head through a window. Later that day, a traveler stopped by the house and stayed at the inn for the night. He refused the tea that Lavinia offered and grew suspicious of his hosts. The story goes that when he went to his room, he sat in a chair by the door all night. In the middle of the night, he heard a loud noise and saw that the bed dropped through the floor. He was so scared, he leapt through a window and ran to the authorities. Lavinia and John Fisher were arrested for assault, along with other gang members, and put in the city jail. Despite the reports of the killings, the couple was never charged with murder. They were housed in the same jail cell while they awaited trial. The jail conditions were said to be deplorable, with no way to keep out the heat or cold, overrun with insects and rodents, and no running water. Filth was everywhere. Beatings, whippings, and assaults were common. At one point, the couple tried to escape using knotted together blanket as a rope, but it broke and John refused to leave Lavinia behind. They sat in jail and awaited their fate. So an arrest and trial take place where both John and Lavinia are convicted of highway robbery. Okay. 
And quite frankly, that punishment is death. So a tree like this would have been utilized and they would have been hung from these gallows. Lavinia and her husband were found guilty of multiple robberies and were sentenced to be hanged. At the time, highway robbery was an offense punishable by death, just like murder. According to legend, Lavinia, who was 27 years old, was defiant and didn't believe she would be executed for her crimes. On February 18, 1820, the day of their executions, the Fishers were taken from the Charleston jail to the gallows behind the building. According to legend, Lavinia had worn her wedding dress, clinging to the hope that a married woman could not be hanged. While the law did forbid a married woman to be executed, there was no law against hanging a widow. The judge had ordered that John Fisher be hanged first. Although John had insisted that he was innocent and asked for mercy for those who had done him wrong, he went quietly to his end, praying with a minister. Lavinia, on the other hand, refused to walk the gallows. She had to be carried as she hollered and ranted in front of the crowd that had gathered. Before she was hung, she reportedly yelled out, If you have a message you want to send to hell, give it to me. I'll carry it. Then Lavinia jumped off the scaffolding herself, rather than allowing the hangman to do his job. That was her end. The ghost of Lavinia wearing her wedding dress is said to haunt the city jail and Charleston to this day. So after she was hung, legend is that her spirit now walks these buildings in the hallways in her wedding dress. So that's the story of Lavinia Fisher, the first female serial killer. We're grateful that you're here with us and uh, coming along on this journey. If you like what you're seeing, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to put your comments in there. We're grateful for your feedback as well. See you next week.